Following up last week's look at the MacBook Pro 13-inch with function keys, we have Apple's new 13-inch MacBook Pro with Touch Bar. How is it different from the other model, and is it worth your time? I'm Jason with Maslin Tech, and this is the 13-inch MacBook Pro with Touch Bar. First of all, we have external differences before you even open the lid. The Touch Bar equipped models have four Thunderbolt 3 ports, two on the left and two on the right. The left side ports don't line up with the two port model, so be aware of this if you're looking for a hard shell for your new Mac. The ports have been moved ever so slightly in order to be symmetrical with the two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the right side. Apple warns that the ports on the right side have a lower bandwidth, but in my testing I didn't notice a difference. Outside of pixel dense monitors, like LG's new 5K ultrafine monitor, I don't think you'll find many things that will tax the right side ports. Opening the device presents you with everything you get on the MacBook Pro with function keys, minus the function keys. In their place is the computer's namesake, the touch bar. The touch bar is a short but wide OLED strip with a touch ID button on the far right. Yes, a physical escape key is gone, and yes, the touch bar doesn't have a ton of function today, but the potential is there. My first couple of hours with the MacBook Pro were spent just opening applications to see how the touch bar would react. As it stands, most applications just have basic support. The most impressive showings were in Apple's Keynote. Final Cut, Safari, and Photos all have deep integration with the touch bar. Other apps like Notes and System Preferences have very limited options. Interestingly, while watching YouTube videos in Safari, the scrubbing slider on the touch bar can scrub through otherwise unskippable ads. As more third-party apps update for the touch bar, it'll become more useful. We'll probably have to wait for the next big OS update to get more baked-in support. As it stands, there are some noticeable inconsistencies. For example, I can slide the fanned out brightness and sound icons, but can't slide the smaller ones. On a final note, Touch ID on the Mac is one of the most subtle, yet brilliant additions. Setting up Touch ID will allow you to unlock your computer, as well as pay for purchases that support Apple Pay, like the App Store. The Touch ID button can also be pressed. If the computer is off, it acts as a power button, but if the computer is on, a triple click of it will act as a shortcut to accessibility. Moving on beyond the touch bar, the internals are faster in this version too. The CPU has been upgraded from a 2.0 GHz processor to a 2.9 GHz processor. The integrated GPU, the Intel 550, is a slight upgrade from the 540 as well. Finally, the RAM is slightly faster at 2133 MHz. In real world use, the two computers run at a pretty similar pace. Tasks outside of more demanding rendering and editing are just as quick between the two models. I'm saving detailed testing for when I get my 15-inch MacBook Pro. Finally, a few thoughts on the new MacBook Pros after extended use. First of all, I'm completely on board with the new keyboard. I've adjusted to the newer keys and typed just as fast as before. The switches are so solid and tactile, even with their minimal travel. I think most people that give the keyboard an extended trial will agree. Secondly, terminal commands can bring back some of the old behaviors new Macs abandon. Besides restoring the chime, you can also disable automatic booting when opening the lid. Also, having a dedicated Siri button on the touch bar makes Siri much more viable on the Mac. Go to gizmodo.com. And finally, while the new displays are the same resolution as before, they now default to a scaled resolution. Out of the box, the 2560 by 1600 display renders the real estate of a 900p display. So there you have it. Those are my impressions of the MacBook Pro with touch bar and the new MacBook Pros in general. If you want to see more details on them, check out my previous video on the model with the function keys, and look out for my review of the 15-inch when I get mine in. You may have spotted Peak Design's new bag in the footage. I'll have a video on that too, soon. Once again, this is Jason with Maslin Tech. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next one.